27. By calculating delta S for the universe at each temperature, determine if the melting of one mole of NaCl solid is spontaneous at 500 degrees Celsius and 700 degrees Celsius. And then they give us values. They tell us that the entropy, the S for NaCl solid is 72.11 joules per mole times Kelvin. The entropy value for NaCl liquid is 95.06 joules per mole times Kelvin. And then the delta H fusion is 27.95 kilojoules per mole. What assumptions are made about the thermodynamic information, entropy, and the enthalpy values used to solve this problem? Okay, so before we talk about any assumptions, let's just quickly, or not quickly, but let's just run through how we would find the delta S for the universe, right? UNIV is the universe. Now, there's a couple of uh, formulas for delta S universe. But it looks like for here, they gave us S values and they gave us a heat value, right? Delta H is an enthalpy value and enthalpy is heat. I remember that by knowing that the, there's an H in the word enthalpy and H in heat. So they go together. Um, entropy is the S. So the wordings is a little bit similar but there's entropy and enthalpy. Enthalpy is your delta H, so it's H is all around. For heat and entropy is always talking about randomness of the molecules or disorder or chaos. And in this case, we wanna know the universe. Now, since we're dealing with heat values and delta S for the universe, we're gonna use this formula right here. Delta S for the whole entire universe will equal, or in, you know, in this problem, will equal the, the delta S for the system plus Q divided by T. Okay, so let's see. Let's first work with this Q divided by T. We want to basically find out the delta S for the universe, which means that we should know these three components. Now, maybe what I'll do is I will split this up because... They said that we want to find out whether it's spontaneous at 500 degrees Celsius and 700 degrees Celsius. So we're going to do one for 500. So this, the left side will be 500 degrees Celsius, and then the right side will be 700 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now, in order to find out if something is spontaneous or non-spontaneous, we're always looking for the delta S universe. So just know that your system, your delta S for your system, which is what, you know, what reaction is going on, is not going to tell you whether you're spontaneous or not. Your surroundings is not going to tell you if you're spontaneous or not. It's the two of them combined, the universe, system plus the surroundings. Now, in this case, you have two different outcomes. You have positive and negative, right? If you're... Delta S for, for the universe is positive. That's a good thing. That's your spontaneous one. So we're looking for a value to come out to being positive. But if it comes out to being a negative, that's non-spontaneous. And the universe is going towards uh, less randomness, less disorder. And that's the unfavorable one. Okay. So... Let's see, I'm going to put the equation again here. Maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller, right? So let's just work with our Q value. Remember that a Q is a heat value. Oh, but they gave me a delta H value, but that's also a heat. So in essence, a delta H value is basically the same thing as a Q value because they can have the same units. However, we just have to make sure that the S values and the Q values match. Now over here, for our S values, they gave it to us in joules. But our delta H value is in kilojoules. So the first thing I would do is I would just quickly convert the kilojoules into joules, right? So in essence, if you have 27.95 kilojoules per mole 
and I and I just quickly wanted to find out the joules per mole. Right? The joules are on the top, kilojoules are on the top. All you gotta do is just multiply by 1,000. So I'm gonna take my 29, uh, my 27.95 and times it by 1,000. You can move the decimal over three times to the left. So it's a pretty big number, 27950. So 27,950 joules per mole. That's this value right here. Okay. Now, temperature for this to work. The units have to be the same, but if we notice the S values are in Kelvin, so this also has to be in Kelvin. But they gave it to us in Celsius, but that's okay, because I could just do 500 plus 273, right? 500 plus 273, that's how I go from Celsius to Kelvin. Kelvin, so 567, this would be 773 Kelvin. Okay, so we got this figured out. Now, how are we going to get a delta S for the system? Well, that comes from a balanced equation. Now, keep in mind, they said that we are melting. And if we're melting a substance, that means that we have to start with the solid and go to a liquid. So I'm starting with NaCl solid. And I'm going to NaCl liquid. Okay, I'm just going to write the corresponding values down. The solid entropy value was 72.11, and the products is 95.06. Now, how are we going to find the delta S for the system? Well, remember that the delta S, the change in the entropy for the whole entire system, is your products minus your reactants. So it's the sum of your S values for your product. And you're just gonna subtract from the sum of your S values for your reactants. And now this one is pretty easy because you only have one mole of each, right? One mole of NaCl, one mole of NaCl on the product side, and they ask for one mole, so we're good with that. So I don't have to multiply these values or anything because they're the same value. So let's just find out what that system is. Delta S for the whole entire system would be your product, 95.06, and I'm just going to subtract the 72.11. So let's see, we get a delta S for the whole entire system is 95.06 minus 72.11. Hold on a minute. Forgot that last one there. So we get 22.95, 22.95 joule per mole times Kelvin. That's this value. So I'm just gonna plug that in. So this would be 22.95. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to shift things over here because we're gonna use the same information as you know for the 700. So I'm just pulling that over there. We'll, we'll take care of this when we get to the 700. But for right now, we have everything that we need. Delta S for the whole entire universe in this example, is equal to 22.95 plus, we have those two values. So let's see, we got 27.950 divided by 773. Now, before we go further, I just want to point something out that this Q value, this is for your surroundings. Now, when they were talking about the delta H for the fusion, fusion is talking about when you have a solid going to a liquid. And in this case, it's gonna be your NaCl with your NaCl, right? Your solid to your liquid. So this fusion value is talking about your system. However, when we use this formula, the Q value has to be in terms of surroundings. And the 
the parameters for system and surroundings is that if you have a positive system, you have a negative surroundings. So since they told us that this was a positive 27.95 and I want to find out the surroundings, this heat value would be a negative. So just make sure on that. If they give you delta H values for a system, you got to change the value because you need that Q surroundings. It's just going to be the inverse number. Now, since we have everything, I'm just going to plug this into the calculator in one shot and just see what that delta S value is. So let's see. I get negative 27.950 divided by 773. And then I'm going to plus 22.95. Okay, so I get... Uh, how many sig figs? Three. I guess, uh, I mean, they did give temperature was... Three sig fit. Well, not really, because there's no decimal there. I'll just, I'll just put, I'll just put negative thirteen, negative thirteen point two, and we'll we'll call it that. And this is now joules per mole times Kelvin. So at your five hundred degrees Celsius, are we spontaneous? No, we're not. We're at a negative value. So is it spontaneous at 500 degrees? No, not spontaneous. Okay. So we answered the first one. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to take the information that we know and just use it for the 700. So what I'm going to do is just pause the video if you need this, but this is going to go bye-bye. And what we do need to know is I'm just going to pull... Actually... I'm going to pull this over. So this is staying, right? Now we did find already the delta S for the system, so that changes, or that, that stays the same. The heat is going to stay the same. Keep in mind that it's now going to be a negative value. So the only thing that's changing is your temperature value. Instead of 773, we are upping it to 700 degrees. So this temperature should be 700 plus 273. So now we're at 973. Let's see if that makes any difference. Delta S universe equals, let's see, negative 27950 divided by 973 plus 22.95. Mm, I still get a negative value, 5 point, uh, we'll say 5.7, 5 5.7, 5 I guess, yeah, 5 5.7, I guess 5.8. And this is now joules per mole times Kelvin. Is this spontaneous? Still a negative value. So that is no, not spontaneous. Laser tutoring. Hello? And we'll put a little exclamation there. Okay, so that answers the first two questions. Is it spontaneous at these temperatures? No, not at 500 and not at 700. Now comes the assumptions. What assumptions are made about the thermodynamic information, entropy, and the enthalpy values used to solve this problem? So basically, for these, we have two conflicting temperature values. When we were talking about the S values, these are standard because their temperatures are already, you know, included in the S value. So for your entropy, which was your, your S values, th these were at standard temp. And the standard temp, if we use the back of the textbook, was 298 
0.15 Kelvin. But as far as your entropy, uh, your enthalpy values, and maybe I'll just bring this over here. As far as your enthalpy values, we were at different temperatures, 500 degrees Celsius and 700. So we were at 773 Kelvin and 973 Kelvin. So the assumptions that we can make is that since we're at two different Kelvin values, or technically three different, is that the delta S is not going to change much whether you're at 298 or 773 and 973. So that's basically the assumption. Also, another assumption is that the S values probably don't change greatly from these three temperatures. That's why they gave it to us from the standard values. So there you go. I really hope this one helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel, and I hope to be talking to you, um, you know, when I talk to you in the next le lesson. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.